I'd like to welcome Rob back to us. This is his fifth year with us. He came when the, I think the iPhone was first released. Actually, six so, years. Six years. iPhone, that was very exciting at the time. And each year, Rob's come back and shared us new things happening in the iOS field. Thanks for having me back. That's why I was, at the end of these sessions each year, I just do a save as, and I say KFest. So tomorrow, this will be KFest 13, the leading version of the keynote presentation. <laughs> but I keep a lot of the notes, and I was just looking at the notes, and, and one of them was like, okay, I had to left the note from the second year in here, which was, what do we know about the Jesus phone one year later? And I said, no short of baldness or help losing weight. And I'm like, wait a second, I was 240 pounds in 2008. It was actually helpful. I lost weight. <laughs> so maybe it does help lose weight. Um, last year it came out. And um, here's so you know they have a roundup of what's going to be in the iPhone 5, and people are talking about the bigger screen. There's that the rumor is going to go all the way to the edge, no no edge. Um, it's going to be without a home button. Uh, the better camera, the better camera, I do believe. I do believe that better camera one. This one here, better resolution. How do you get better resolution than Retina display? Why would you have better resolution than Retina display? We're going to turn it up to 11. <laughs> um, so it comes down to two basic camera steps. People that believe it's going to be the same design and that there's going to be a drastic new design with the metal back. I fall into the same design category. Um, I, I don't see it going to the four inch screen. Uh, I think it's going to be the same screen, the same. I think when you look at the iPhone 5, it's going to look pretty much just like the iPhone 4. I think this is the iPhone 5. Um, it might be a little bit thinner, it might be a little bit lighter. Um, but it's basically going to look like this, I think. It's going to have the higher resolution camera. Um, camera on here right now is not good. Uh, it'll have a faster processor and maybe have a little bit more RAM. But I, I just, it's a pretty nice design right now. I just don't see them going away from it to something radical. Um, especially when they sold 20.34 million last quarter. It's not like people are going, oh, we don't like this anymore. Change. <laughs> So that was my predictions last year. How I did, got the name wrong. Yeah, everybody got the name wrong. So I'll take you know some clarification there. I don't know. No one said iPhone 4s. Uh, it didn't become the iPhone 5, and I, I didn't get the extra RAM. But I, I was right. It was exactly the same design. I mean, this is the iPhone 4. This is the iPhone 4s. And the only reason I know the two, which one's which, is this one's white. And that's why I got the white one, so I knew which one was which. Um, yeah. It has the high res camera, the same screen resolution, same screen size, so pretty much what we thought it was going to be, uh, other than the name. There was a lot of people that were saying last year when the iPhone 4 came out, oh, it's a minor update, it's a minor, you know, it, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, I put this chart together today, it actually was kind of a big update. It went from a one core to a two core processor, uh, went from 720p to 1080p video. Uh, it went from a 5 megapixel to an 8 megapixel uh, camera, plus a better lens. Uh, it had face detection and was available on Sprint. It had Siri, which was a big update. Uh, it became a world phone, Bluetooth 4. So, and, and it went up to 64 gig of storage. So, and you can Apple mirroring. So I could actually put their presentation on the phone and hook it up to the projector now and run it. So it's, I thought the iPhone 4S was a pretty good update. And you know who else thought it was a pretty good update? Consumers, 37 million they sold. Uh, then the next quarter, 35 million. Not too shabby. Uh, did pretty good. In past years, when I've come, it's always been the day after the Apple quarterly keynote, you know, quarterly presentation. I always give new numbers this year. Unfortunately, it's next week. Uh, I'm guessing we'll see how I do next year. I'm guessing that when the chart's updated next week, it's going to be about 35.5 million iPhones sold last quarter. I think most analysts are putting it at like 26 to 28 million. I think that number's way too low. I think I think they're underestimating when the iPhone's going to come in this past quarter. Um, overall, there's been 218 million iPhones sold before this past quarter. So a lot. And I, like I said, when I came out here the first time, it wasn't even a million sold. So we're now at, at over 218 million iPhones. This next slide I love. And I think all Apple people love this slide. This is the revenue in Q1 of this year. Wow. iPhone has, just the iPhone part of Apple is bigger than Microsoft. <laughs> all of Microsoft. 
you know, and you remember back in 2007 when Steve Ballmer had that great laugh, and he just laughed and said, oh, that iPhone, no, no one's going to buy it, da, da, da. And now, look who's left. Yeah, they, they all bought the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what's even more interesting. More revenue from the iPhone since it's launched than all Apple products from 94 to 2006. Oh, wow. It's become a huge part of the business. iPad's doing pretty good. Uh, new iPad's out. Uh, people got it. And then and we cover you have too. Uh, guesstimates uh, this quarter, I'm going to say, I, my, on my show, I said it was going to be 18.75 million. We'll see where I come in. I think the consensus on the street is like 15 million. Again, I think they're low. Uh, 67 million iPads sold to date. And, and this next chart, Android is catching up. Uh, somewhere in this past quarter, both Android and iOS crossed the 400 million mark of devices sold. So iOS and Android right now are kind of on parallel. Um, but it's not my job to compliment Android, so I think we'll just throw the money. When you're on a plane, you have some real good fun with you know with the animation. <laughs> um, like I said, we'll throw Android on the bus. This is a tweet I put up. I also put up on Facebook, and I got a bunch of people reacting to the tweet. And it was, I had a new realization. Oh, people buy Android phones because they need a phone. People buy an iPhone because they need more than a phone. And people were like, you know, some Android boys were coming after me, and I'm like, hey, here's some facts. I know they don't like facts. Um, app downloads per user, two to one ratio iOS to Android. Podcast downloads, 10 to 1 ratio. Free. So people are like, hey, you know, well, people don't want to spend anything on, on, on the Android. Well, these are free, and it's still a 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, web traffic, again, free to tra surf the web on the browser. Both devices come with browsers. 3.25 to 1 ratio when you look at uh, traffic on websites from iOS devices versus Android. And then Android people really are cheap because then 84% of mobile game revenue versus 16% for Android. And then mobile sales, it's 90% for iOS versus 10% for Android and all other mobile platforms. I couldn't get the breakout from the others, so I just left it as Android. So again, back to my quote, I really, it's not just that I think that, it's really when you look at how people use Android, uh, they're not using it like people use an iOS device. When they get an, an iPhone, they're getting it because they want to do more than make phone calls. If you don't have an iPhone, I'd ask you what's wrong with you. But I already know. You're poor. Or a loser. Or a person who doesn't care about technology. Which means you're either poor or a loser. We didn't even make this commercial to sell you an iPhone. We made it to mock you for being one of the have-nots. We are the sneeches with stars upon the arse. And you are one of the regular sneeches. If you don't have an iPhone, honestly, good. In your face. If you don't have an iPhone, frankly, I played that last year. Or I want to play it again because I thought it was such a good to think. If you don't have an iPhone, you're you're not. You're just making phone calls. Uh, here's some content that's been created, and people do more than just consume on the iPhone. They create. So here's some neat artwork I've gotten the last year from my listeners. I was like going through some artwork. Uh, this one guy here, Izzy Azar, makes incredible artwork, um, and he does, he creates all this on iOS devices. So all this artwork you see here has been created on an iOS device. Is that self portrait? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was, uh, he made that for one of my listeners. I have, a, I have a troll of a listener who calls in and harasses me and, and sends all kinds of nasty things and says stuff, and, and um, so he made this for my troll. <laughs> um, and then wow. I thought this was just really an incredible artwork. That's yeah. very much misrepresented the jobs that make them look bulky and impressive. How did they do that? Yeah. They got a little smirk going on. They, they must use style up or stylized up. Yeah, I could find out. I don't remember which app they used for this one. Um, but again, uh, 
they do use one of the guys that does it. Izzy, I think he does it with his finger. I don't think he uses his dials. I don't know in this one. You can zoom in and, and, and do people's. I have no talent in this area whatsoever. I mean, I'm lucky to do stick figures. XCD, whatever that is. XCD. Yeah, that guy's better than me. I mean, this that guy's awesome to draw something. So, the last 12 months, biggest news before we get into it, obviously, is Captain Steve Jobs, and that was very sad for everyone. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it was a, a, an interesting year. iPhone 4S and Siri. Uh, Siri has its ups and downs. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people don't even care. I like Siri. It works good for me. It doesn't always answer all your questions correct. Sometimes they're funny the way she answers, so it doesn't answer. Um, I asked her, I go, why do people think you suck? And she goes, let me do a web query for that. Yes, that's why. Okay. Um, we have the new iPad, which is the name of it, which is a good chance that the new iPhone is going to be the new iPhone. Um, I will refer, I, I've gone to the point now just referring to the new iPhone as iPhone 2012 to keep any confusion out of things. Um, the iPad 2 price reduction podcast app. So anybody who's a podcast listener, there's a new podcast app, which isn't quite there yet. Let's call it beta, as I say in my show. Consider it beta until iOS 6 comes out. Uh, iOS 6 beta 3 came out this week. Um, yeah, be here. Yeah. Turn yeah. by turn from Denver. Did, it, did you see it? I, was, I, didn't, I haven't tried it yet because I, I, I've got two phones. Uh, this is the one I, I have jailbroken, so I haven't put it on yet because I use uh, PDA net. I know it's being recorded a lot. Um, <laughs> I didn't even bring it But I have it on this one. But I didn't get a map. I just trusted it all the way here. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk about MapQuest. I used the MapQuest app to uh, get me here, but I was in Pittsburgh at our home office this past weekend, and uh, I got lost twice with it at the same intersection both times. And one time it sent me over a different river, and another time another river. And I'm like, oh, that was beta three. Uh, no, it was, it was just uh, the uh, MapQuest app. Oh, map. MapQuest. There's a free. So people that don't have iOS six now and you want to turn by turn directions for free, you can do it on your iOS device. It's called MapQuest. And it's free voiceover and navigation. I got. I used that to get up here today. It actually works pretty good. Uh, in its defense, the intersection I got lost at it was just a nightmare. Pittsburgh intersection where you come up, make this turn, and you've got like five ways to go, and and you have to roll the dice and guess on the right one. Do the squads going to be available online? I I will pull. I if you guys zip uh, drive, I'll give them to you. Yeah, I've, I've done it. You have to make them available. Um, Another thing, iBooks Author. Uh, has anyone here played around with iBooks Author yet? Really nice. If anyone played with Key, anyone here use Keynote? Then you can use iBook Author. If you know how to use Keynote, iBook Author is, is really similar in the interface. It's, a, it's an iBook. Oh, and the other thing is, you do use iBook Author. Uh, it does not take MP3 files to play audio in there. So if you want to bring audio in, you have to bring in an M4A, which you, which is you don't find that anyway. You, you learn that by contacting Apple, and then they tell you. Um, oh, one of the other things was uh, one of the other big things for this past year was lawyers. I hate lawyer stories. I don't report. If you listen to my podcast, you're not going to hear much stuff about the lawyers. I try to keep all that lawsuit stuff out of my show. It gets really boring after a while, and I figure people are driving. What was what's new in iOS six? I you know it's not the most thrilling of the iOS updates for the past six years. Um, I know in the past people acted for iOS five people were buying the beta to get a hold of the beta ahead of time. I don't recommend you do that with iOS six. Um, the big thing is uh, the turn by turn directions when that's available. Uh, the maps with flyover is fluff. Um, the podcast app is nice, but it's really not part of iOS 6. You can get it now. Um, mail, VIP list. The biggest thing I saw out of iOS 6 of everything was fragmentation. You're not going to be able to see this here. It's a horrible chart uh, for blowing up. But anything you see red means it's not included. And there's a lot of red circles under the iPhone 3GS, which are still selling. And then there's iPhone 4, which has some more red circles. And the iPod Touch and the iPad 2. So there's a lot of devices that you can still buy from Apple today that don't have a lot of the features they announced, which was rather unique. 
weird. And, and actually, with iOS 6 beta 3 this week, they actually gave back three features that they said originally weren't going to be for the 3DS, which technically, I, I kind of ranted on my show, was seemed like it was a marketing move, not a technology move from Apple's part, but it was kind of BS from Apple to limit stuff on the 3DS. If you're selling the device and it's technically capable of doing it, you should have the feature. That's what I would say. Well, I was going to say one, one other significant thing is the ability of Siri to watch apps. I think that, that yes. to me has been the most handy thing in iOS 3. And yeah, I think you have iOS 3. So yeah, yes, that's going to be one of the new things. I, again, I haven't played around much with the beta. Set. I have it on one of my machines. Uh, I do some of the most with the podcast apps, which is here, and I'm a podcaster, so I like that. Um, when you actually launch it, here's another new feature. When you have a new app on your iPhone, you put a little new banner over it until you launch it the first time. It's not much, but when you have a whole lot of apps on your phone, you've got full 11 pages of apps, uh, it's nice to be able to scan through and find where that new one pops in. You never know where they're going to go. What Apple did was there's a reel-to-reel -reel player. And actually, the reel gets smaller on this side and bigger on this side as the episode goes through. Hmm. So, you know, they added some animation. But it still is a little... Mm. I thought it would be interesting to compare how the iPhone 4 and the 4S camera look. Uh, these were pictures I showed last year's presentation. And this was me standing in a single spot. I took a picture. Then I did the digital zoom as much as I could, trying to get centered on this picture. And it got me to this point. Then after taking the picture, I used the zoom on the iPhone itself and then did the home button and the, and the power button at the same time to take that picture. So that's how it looks on the iPhone 4. Same exact spot. Did it again and zoomed in. And here's a better slide that will actually show you side by side. You can see a little bit more definition in this one versus that one. Uh, you can actually see that there's a second dog here. These are dogs. Maybe actually, so, but this is with the 4S. This is with the 4, same spot, zooming in. You can see it's a little bit smoother here than this one. Looks like the new camera's good. Uh, on the iPad, the new iPad, this isn't going to show up. This doesn't show up near as well as it looks on Apple's website, but uh, the retina display, I'll just say, on this, phenomenal. So if you haven't gotten a chance to see one, they, they really did a great job on it. Watching Netflix on this, is wonderful. Um, and if you're reading too, iBook is really nice because it's just so smooth. New things this year in the iPad um, one gigahertz dual core A5X, one gig RAM, uh, 64 gig of storage still. Uh, this is the 2048 by 1536 Retina quad core. LTE was the big, you know, this and the Retina display were the two big jumps. And, and this pretty much says that the next iPhone will be LTE. But the next iPhone you know, needs to be more than just LTE. Now, how many of you heard about the uh, iPad mini rumors? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got my hands on that. <laughs> well, I can show you. Here, here come. Look at the difference. That's the iPad mini. Of course, that's my son's hand. My hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was trying to do a video where he holds it. And then he pulls it away, and then I go in at a lower angle. But trying to get a six-year-old to do that just right <laughs> just didn't work. But I'll tell you what, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, if you're going to do uh, a Photoshop job, I, you know, I didn't even use Photoshop. I did it all. You know, just took two photos, brought it in, scaled it, and took out the background. But that's what the iPad Mini would look like in comparison. <laughs> if you were a six-year-old, this is how it would change its hand size relationship. Um, this was one of the ones from last year uh, for the iPhone 2011 prediction. Um, this is what I had to say about that one. Joshua Polsky, if this is my next follow-up, this one had zero chance of being the iPhone 5, but it got a lot of hits this website. It uh, <laughs> doesn't matter if you're accurate, it only matters if you drive traffic. <laughs> Why is it so unlikely to be real? It has it thinned out? And it just, okay, if you're going to take it and you're going to side to side, you're going to increase the screen size, and you're going to make it much thinner than it currently is, then you have no battery. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was basically what they they, they inquired us about the iPhone Air. And um, this is uh, when we come back next year, I guarantee you that this will not be what the iPhone 5 looks like. So I was right. I wasn't. Yeah, I'm not going to say that Joshua Tupolsky and this is my next, which is now The Verge. I'm not saying they're, they they try to get traffic. It works. Yeah, it works when you put up those rumors. Um, I liked this one last year, and I, I mentioned this as one of I thought was one of the uh, meter thoughts on her. Um, this one I like. This of all of them, this is one of my favorite ones. For not for this picture, but for this picture. The apple's flesh. Ah. Ooh. And I was like, oh, that's ingenious. Photoshop, I love it. Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, okay, I like I gotta give the guy credit for ingenuity and creativity on that one. Except it kind of does happen. <laughs> so there's a mod that you can make for your iPhone 4 and 4S. Where when you turn the screen on, it lights up in the back. And this one actually, the little logo. If you actually get closer later, it's actually Steve Jobs' silhouette. In there. Oh. So yeah, I thought this was a neat mod, and it, no soldering, so you can take it back out if it breaks, and then put the old cover back on, and now we won't know. Not that I, this isn't my phone. I borrowed it. Um, but yeah, I, this was one of my favorite mods or accessories for the past year, which actually goes into my accessory, which is, I actually brought this out the very first time I came. This was my favorite first accessory and it still works. And it still holds the phone pretty good. Other designs that probably are not going to happen for the iPhone 2012, at least I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that is freaky scary. <laughs> I thought I would read. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ones that are out there, uh, and I, of all of them, I thought that was the most scary. <laughs> yeah, I just it's something like, you know, just grabs your hand and it's stuck. It's like a sci-fi movie waiting to happen. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night and realizing that's on your hand. We are the board. The um, general consensus this year from the rumor mills is that this is what kind of design is going to look like from the back of it. It's going to be a solid steel back um, and around the side and it's going to be a wider four inch screen on the front. This year I'm not so sure this isn't, I think this one might actually be this. I do that. You know, I think this one has a better than a 50-50 chance. I don't think they're going to stay. The only thing I really don't like about this design is that they talk about a new dock now. And I really think that's a big mistake if Apple goes that way. Because, you know, I, I've got this that works. Um, there's so many devices and accessories I have that have that 30 pin dot connector. And, and that's a major hit to the ecosystem. Now, people go, oh, well, Apple just changed the Maglit connector on the MacBooks, went from Mag, you know, Maglit to Maglit 2. You know, what about people with their, um, bat their um, extra uh, battery or power supply? That's one thing on, on a MacBook that costs $3,000. Who cares? But when you're talking about a device, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks, and you've got a Bose dock and this dock and a whole bunch of other docks, that, that's going to be a major hit. I think that if Apple does go this way and this does turn out to be the device in October, I think you're going to hear a lot of bemoaning about this. Or, or even talks and cars will have. What? Do, do cars have 30 pin connectors? Yes, a lot. I mean, there's the other that they have built in. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, just every, there's so many accessories. I mean, I was trying to go through my house. I think I'm going to go through and find every 30 pin connector device I have and put them on the table and take a picture, and put it up on a blog post. But I mean, I have at least 40 different devices at my house now. Granted, I'm not your normal user, um, but it, I hope that's. I hope this turns out not to be the case. I hope Apple realizes that part of their ecosystem and buy and lock in is the 30 pin connector and they don't make this change. I think they will. Yeah, a lot of people do. I, and, and I'm afraid they might. I, I, hope, I hope they don't. I mean, they, they just did the, the new MicroSense, so they're obviously. Well, the MicroSense is a bit. MicroSense has no accessories. Oh, I know. It's, it's, 
clearly different than they're trying to economize them. They're trying, yes, they're trying to get smaller, but I mean, I, there's getting smaller and then there's hurting these end users. Now, I always look at it, Apple, of all the companies, cares more about the users than anyone else. I mean, Google, you, Google cares about advertisers. That's who's their customer. Apple cares about the end users. That's their customer. So hopefully, they'll, they'll, they'll make a change. Uh, this was one of the things about accessories this past year I thought was interesting. I think the big trend in the last year was Kickstarter. A lot of Kickstarter projects. This one here, $10 million on Kickstarter. It was all said and done. And they closed early because I went to buy it a couple days before it was supposed to close, and they had shut it down eight days early. Yeah, they could have had more money. Um, they closed it because they had so many orders. Um, now, here's one, if Apple does change that connector, um, that you're gonna wanna have, and I actually ordered this one. Um, it's a pair, it's called the Pair with Pair. It is a little dongle that plugs into your 30 pin connectors, and then you can communicate via Bluetooth. So if you've got an old Bose a a dock, you can put it in the Bose dock and then stream your music to the, the device. So the new iPhone with a different connector, you're okay. Yeah, I'm like super cheap, by the way, and I report Kickstarter projects like every week on my show, so I can't be buying everything. So when I go and become a backer, that to me that says a lot. Now they've got 55 days to go and they had already hit 85,000. I don't know where they're at today. Um, but pair with pair, if you have like a Bose dock or any of these music docks, and, and you, maybe they don't change the connector, but you still, what's nice about this is you can take your phone and have it laying next to the stereo or in your pocket, streaming the music to your Bose dock. When someone calls, you don't have to run over and try to get it out of the, the, the stereo. So I, I like that. It's, uh, it's a neat little device again. It'll just plug into the 30 pin connector. Um, Another one uh, was the eye latch, which you put it in and you can just hook it on to seats or uh, onto bars and then you put your iPad in here and it's just nice if you have kids. I've got two kids. So you can put this in there for a car ride and get it latched in behind the seat rest. So that's nice. Especially with little kids and then strollers. This one, the girl that made this, uh, Laura, uh, designed this. She's got a little girl, so she designed it for her daughter in the stroller. So this is a neat little Kickstarter project. Another new one that's out for people that have the smart covers, you'll like this one here. Um, it's one of those things you see and go, oh, no! It's a little connector that goes on the side of your smart, uh, your, your, uh, smart cover so that it does, you can have it bend at different angles so it doesn't have to bend at the joints. Basically, it locks the joint in place. And this one's, by the way, this one's still in Kickstarter 20-something days to go. I think I pulled this earlier this weekend. So uh, if you're interested in that, and it's only like 11 bucks, you get two of them. So anyone with a smart cover, this is really nice. And uh, one of the other ones I got with Kickstarter, someone sent me that was doing a Kickstarter project was these. And you're probably going, what's that? If you do a lot of typing with your iPad, put a zoom like this. And it just makes it easier to hold. So it just uh, gives you a different way to grip it. It's neat. I like it. My wife, not so much, but I do. And that guy actually had it up on Kickstarter, and then he wasn't going to get the funding, and then he pulled the Kickstarter project down to regroup on the marketing side of things, and he's going to relaunch it. He's going to lower it. He's getting his costs down. That's what I tell people. I, so I'm covering Kickstarter. I always tell them, it's amazing now because that one got a ten million dollars. Before then, everybody's goal used to be like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, and the guy gets a million, ten million, and everyone's goal jumped up to one hundred fifty thousand. I'm like, keep your goal as low as possible. If people like your product, they're not going to stop buying or pledging once you hit your goal. But if you've got a goal at one hundred fifty and you raise one hundred forty nine thousand, kind of an idiot. Oh, and the other accessory I got here recently because is a is a Bluetooth keyboard with phones so you can make Skype calls. Oh wow! And it also doubles as a case. So when you travel, then it just fits in there as the case. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that falls out. I always recommend taking that off. And you got to cook a little cable there. For, but I thought that was neat. 
It was a neat one. It's always nice to have a Bluetooth keyboard with you on that one. Oh, and, and I have to show you one more accessory here. I made this one myself. Sorry, 400. I knew those were good for something. And you know, you can get them like 30 bucks on eBay. So if you want to get one, and it actually had the two tabs used to be here, and they would pop up and stay in place. And then my six-year-old, four-year-old love this. So they, I, they use this all the time for their iPad. So they'll sit there and watch movies with this. Um, and unfortunately, they broke the tabs off and they're down here. Oh, here. So the tabs are actually here that would go on. I actually had it working where it popped up. But anyway, I figured if any crowd would appreciate something to do with Atari 400, it would be you guys. And the beauty is, look, the keyboard fits in there really nice. <laughs> You know, all you do is take the keyboard out, one little Dremel tool. Anyway, I had a blog post if anyone wants to see uh, how that one. Do you have an Atari emulator to run in your iPad? You know that oh. I actually have all the Atari games, so I could run them. Yeah. <laughs> iOS App Store again, still kicking butt, taking names. Uh, you know, there are 600 million, uh, 600 yeah million apps or whatever it is. It's crazy you know, 600,000 apps. It, uh, it just Insane amount of apps in there. A um, couple of the big ones from this past year that they both got acquired Instagram and Draw Something. So, uh, one of the things that now you hear um, if you're an app developer, you have to develop for iPhone first, iOS platform. It's not even a question anymore. These two guys proved that. Um, yeah, you, you may need to go out to the Android world, but Instagram did everything. And you know, got through the, almost to the acquisition point. I think they launched the Android version like a couple of days before the acquisition was announced. But they basically built their audience off only on the iOS side. And it's just uh, when I talk to app developers now, um, many of them tell me, many of them are telling me now that it makes more sense for them not to port their app to Android. They'd rather take the time they would spend porting and testing on all the multitude of Android devices. Take that time and develop a second app on the iOS platform. Um, of course, Angry Birds. Uh, uh, my my one son has now become uh, an Angry Bird addict. I tried for the longest time to keep him away from it. Uh, iBooks. Again, if you haven't done iBooks, there's a really neat iBook out there. It's called Vids, V-I-D-S, and it's a story that Tim Street wrote, so it's a it's a iBook and a movie. He's like 90 minutes of video, along with the audio, and it's kind of a political thriller with the internet mixed into it. And he does it with the iBook, so you're, as you're reading, you get to see the videos they're talking about, and you see the stuff. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, this book here is I actually put one. I, I did an iBook. I got it up there. It's free. If anyone has an iPad and wants to see an iBook, uh, it's called Podcast 101. One thing they don't tell you about iBooks. When you put it in this orientation, when you're reading an iBook, the, the images go away. If you want to see the images, you have to turn it to see the images. There's no warning about that. So when you actually uh, get an iBook, make sure you put it in this mode to see the most out of your iBooks. I didn't even know that until one of my listeners said, hey, because I never even thought of looking at it. This, I was looking at it uh, horizontally. I was always looking at it vert uh, vertically. Other way, I was looking horizontally rather than vertically, and, and I was surprised. So next time I update it, I actually have to put a warning in there telling people not to do that. The jailbreaking again, because 600,000 apps just are not enough. Uh, PDA Net still is working. So if anyone has an iPhone, one main reason to jailbreak is PDA Net. Um, another reason to jailbreak: how many people are Chrome users, like Chrome over Safari? Um, there's an app tweak in, um, in in jailbreak world that makes Chrome your default browser. So if you get a link in an email and you click on it, it will open Safari to open Chrome. So I think that those are the two of the bigger reasons people now are, are jailbreaking uh, for 
that. Again, a lot of different apps here. Um, notified, which is the notification center, which is kind of uh, replaced. It, it, it's interesting. Apple, I think they do a wink, wink, nod, nod to the jailbreak world because every time they update their iOS, there's certain jailbreak apps that seem to make it into iOS. So they kind of look at what's popular in the jailbreak world and what's working, and I think they're using that as inspiration for the next update of iOS. So the reason that people are still able to jailbreak it, I think, has more to do with Apple PC than it. Backgrounder is a good one. 3G Unrestrictor is great because it tricks your iPhone into thinking it's on Wi-Fi, which you'll need that if AT&T decides that they're going to go ahead and charge you for using FaceTime over 3G. Um, so this way it'll now think it's Wi-Fi and maybe AT&T won't charge you. So questions? Yeah, one of the downsides to this mod is when you lay it down, face down, for any reason that you get any in the notifications, the light comes on. So that's the only downside to this mod. So I can see where the notifications are. I'm going to be interesting to see how that works with this mod. It comes out and it doesn't uh, light this up. But yeah, I know a lot of people. Um, complain. That that was one of the items that a lot of people on my listeners liked about iOS 6 was that they were going to finally be able to not get woken up in the middle of the night with pings and stuff. And they, I think what they really wanted you know, just, okay, every night between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., don't don't give a tone when an email comes in. Don't give a tone when a phone call comes in. Uh, just let me sleep. <coughs> yes? The new podcast app, does it support playlists? Uh, no. Which I don't know what they're going to do there because it forces your podcast out of the music app. So I haven't tested that yet to see if you can keep a playlist on in the music app and go down that path. So currently, or it's going to? I currently, literally, if you go back to, if I go back to, we go back to the one slide here. Um, I loaded the new app, but I haven't seen them disappear from iTunes. In iOS 6, they do. In I, so, okay, first let's make this sure. Okay. Uh, podcast on your computer for iTunes. Stay in iTunes. So you'll still use iTunes on your computer to get podcasts. But in iOS 6, when you download, and, and I did confirm this, in iOS 6, the podcast app, you still have to go download it like you do iBooks. It's not auto-installed. When you install podcasts for the first time on iOS 6 and you launch it, you get this message over on the music app. Podcasts have moved, podcasts are now in the podcast app. And you click OK or click podcast and it'll take you to the app. But they, they're gone. There, there is no podcast in the, pod, in the music app anymore. And let me see, I actually, I don't know if I, I synced up here. Uh, you you like that they separated them? I, I would love that they separated them if the podcast app was installed when you installed iOS 6. I would love it. That iOS that the podcast app has to be installed by the end user. I'm not a big fan of. That's 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 that doesn't make sense. So many people don't even know what a podcast is. So. Right, and that's the point. If if, if they came on, and they opened up their iPhone, and they hit the button, you know, and they're looking at the apps, where did you go to the home screen, and, and there was podcasts were sitting right there, and and when the kid held down the button, and there wasn't an X on it, I'd be really, really happy. Did but, they say that was going to be, because I don't yeah. even remember installing that, I thought it was on that No, he had, he had install it. yeah, he had it. Yeah, Yeah, it wasn't available until after beta one came out. I started it. So, but yeah, you have to, it, and I did, it is confirmed that that's the way it was. So, Apple acquired Chomp, Chomp, which was the app to help you discover, discover apps. And yeah, is that what you nothing yet. But then again, it took them two years to do something with Siri. They'll lose, they're going to do something with it. I don't think it was a defensive move to get it, get it out of 
and make Android yeah. harder to play. So I think Apple realizes there's 600,000 apps. Yeah, 600,000 apps that would be only 20. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in 10 of the 20 have Android birds at the beginning of the year. Uh, so if I do, okay, I, I, I loaded the podcast app, and I'm not on iOS 6 yet. Mm -hmm. If I get iOS 6, when it comes out, am I going to be doing this? All your podcasts will move into the podcast app, and they won't be in the news. It'll automatically be in there. They're already subscribed. They're already subscribed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it moves. It, when you launch that podcast app for the first time, be it on iOS 5 or iOS 6, when you launch it for the very first time, it pulls over all your podcasts into the podcast app. It pulls over all your subscriptions, all the episodes. Everything gets put in there. Now, I'm going to say, right now, you have to look at the podcast app as a beta. Because it's not, it's not 100 percent yet. It's not what you would call an Apple quality app. It's not at what you would expect from it. Um, there's some neat features in it. Um, you can subscribe manually to a podcast that's not in the directory. Apple does have that. It's a hidden, it's an Easter egg feature. Um, how you do that is when you launch the podcast app and you go in under the. Um, let's see if I can do this. Brave person who does something who wasn't sure it was going to work. If I go in here, uh, I'm not even sure. I, okay, okay. Go back here. Uh, edit. I remember what the RSS feed was. I'm just doing it. Uh, if you type in this part of the browser, it's even better to email to yourself and copy and paste. Um, Should in theory it, it, it's supposed to in theory at that point say it can't find it and would you like to subscribe? The wizards are too the wizard. Yeah, they're supposed to be too. HTTP/iPhone.wm.wizard.tv slash RSS, and, and it, it had worked previously. Um, again, if you put it here in the search bar and you type in the URL, in theory, what will happen? It moves your lowercase h to the triple letter. And this is one of those ones that. Apple didn't really publicize that it was there. 
to check. Okay, there we go. And then you, you ask, you can just click on subscribe and it will, in theory, subscribe. And there it is, demo CIO. So that's how you subscribe. Again, it is nice with the new iPhone being able to mirror everything and do a presentation off that. And I can't do that too. Yes? You mentioned the possibility of a larger screen in the iPhone. What Supposedly, there's some stretching that ish, uh, tools that work automatically, and from what I hear the developers say, it's not a big deal if it happens. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm not a big fan of the bigger screen. I mean, we're selling a lot of these devices, and people that have been given blind tests where they show different size screen, ask which one they'd like, whether like a huge one or a small one. Most people pick this. I, I don't. One of the things that people say, one of the reasons that the screen is really nice is right now your hand fits. It reaches. It reaches. You get some of these phones, unless your name's Shaquille O'Neal, you're not reaching the top. And, and I'm a guy and I'm reaching. And, you know, I'm just making it as a guy, as my wife, you know, it, it's tough to reach the whole screen with the smaller hand. Um, so unless you have really big hands, some of these phones that are coming out now are mistrusted. And you know what's nice? This fits in my pocket. It's not that big. It's not that intrusive. Um, so I, I really like this size. If I want something bigger, I get this. You know, I'll pull this out if I want to do something more. Um, well, yeah. Andrew just added, um, recently added auto layout. So you can have layout rules and drive the layout of the app. Which can, I think, you know, I, I think that longer term they're going to be more I personally would not, I don't want to see them fragmented, but I think the next iPhone has to have some changes, radical changes, more than just adding LTE, because if the main change for the iPhone 2012 is LTE only, that only addresses the U.S. market, because the LTE doesn't really work outside the U.S. and Canada. Uh, that LTE doesn't work in, in Australia, as Apple found out there, hey, I love Fox News. Apple is, is fined millions of dollars, 2.2 million. So that, be, that, that equates to millions of dollars. Um, uh, but it, and in Europe, it doesn't work. I think in the UK, they had some issues there with the packaging and, and, the, and the terms. So I think the next iPhone will be called the, the new iPhone. Um, uh, I don't think that's the best name. But yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I guarantee you this. I'll give it a guarantee like I did last year. The next iPhone will not be called the iPhone 5. All the people here are calling it iPhone 5. The next iPhone will not be the iPhone 5. This is the fifth generation iPhone. It's already out. It was out last year. So they already had five iPhones. You're not going to make the sixth generation iPhone call it the iPhone 5. That is just so un-Apple uh, to do that. So we call it the 2G iPhone 3. Well, no, you had, you had the iPhone 3G, which was the third generation. So you had the iPhone, the iPhone 3G, which was the second generation, 3GS, which was the third, iPhone 4, which was the fourth, and then the iPhone 4S, which was the fifth. So I don't see them saying iPhone 5, which is the 6. That just doesn't, to me, that doesn't go well. Um, they'll call it something. Maybe, and they're not going to call it the iPhone LTV because of everything that happened with the iPad. So I, I, I think just the new iPhone. Well, OK, I look at this. This is the MacBook. How many people have MacBooks? It probably may not be this MacBook, but I, this isn't my first MacBook, um, or MacBook Pro. Uh, so Apple just in the past for their their product has done yearly increments. Titanium like power book, there was a bunch of iMac. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of iMac. A lot of shapes and sizes, you know, hold on. Yeah. It's really hard to look stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. They, they call it like a early yeah. 2000 yeah. 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 But you know what? I think Apple point is they don't care. You know, they don't think they use end users really. It's taken a lot better than some of these other names you see out there, like something X-734. I mean, yeah. some of the names out there are just horrendous. So I, I just think when we talk next year, we'll be talking about that. Um, 
uh, this is a, a question uh, for emulation enthusiasts, but uh, with the active GS emulator, for example, have you tried running any of these uh, no. uh, and to see if there's a difference between the iPad 2 and the higher display on the, the iPad 3, the new iPad? No, I, I've read that the Retina display makes older graphics maybe not look as good, so well, I'm just wondering if iPad 2 is a better platform for emulation of older systems. Like the Apple did. Yeah, I haven't uh, taken a look back at some of that older stuff. Um, I would not get. I, I I always take a get the latest Apple product. Um, I know people still buy the iPhone 4 and the 3GS and they're for sale. And, and 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 it's funny. I said on my show, I go if you. And I said this back in October. I go if you get the iPhone 4 now after the 4S came out, you're an idiot. I go just that no way around. It's a hundred dollars difference. What kind of idiot would do this? A week and a half later, my brother in law calls me up. I just got the iPhone 4. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Well, point taken. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, have experience with some of the different rich text editing iOS apps like Clean Pages and Box and all the There is, that's the problem on iPad. There really isn't a good rich text editor program on there. We actually, I actually had one episode where we talked about that. People were trying to find a good rich text editor. It seems like there's three to choose from and all of them have some pretty negative. Yeah. One of them that you had to actually go offline. The editing was done uh, in the cloud. That was how they did the rich text editing. It was done in the cloud. That was one one of them. But I don't think we ever did find a good solution with all my listeners. You're not happy with pages. Yeah. No. Yeah, pages doesn't edit RTF a lot of stuff. I read a review that said he did. I don't think so. I think we, we tried that. It, uh, it would open it, um, but I don't think we edited it. Yeah, it's an RTF. How do you find pages? Do you want to add regular Word docs and save them back? Yeah, Word docs? it'll do Word docs fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm almost 100% sure if we did the testing, I did the testing with an RTF file. I have complaints with the cursor, like jump around stuff that it just that was unreliable. But you, know, you never tell a version you release the key. It's just, I haven't bought one yet because I'm just trying to decide what it is. Yeah, if you email me uh, today in iOS at gmail.com. Uh, I'll try to find the episode. I'll look through my show notes, um, uh, or even afterwards, come see me. I'll, I'll look through my show notes here because I have all my show notes, and I'll find which episodes we talked about that. But I, I have all the show notes in Evernote. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Wait, what do you think of uh, some of the anachronistic? Uh, Metaphors are using like the tape, real, real tape. Oh yeah, I guess I could show people who haven't seen this. Oh, it's hard to grab it. Here, yeah. it's hard to kind of see. But if if you actually could see the video up there a little bit closer, the real the real change in size. Oh yeah. So the real gets bigger. Uh, one thing I don't like, it's got a 30 second jump button forward. I don't like that because I'm trying to sell advertising. <laughs> <laughs> so shh, don't tell the advertisers about the 30 second jump button. Right? <laughs> and anyone who codes, Dave's Lounge, by the way, is a great podcast if you're coding. It's down tempo, chill out music. Uh, okay. So it's always nice to have that on in the background um, when you're stressing. Last we heard is from me, early fall, late fall, so I don't yeah, there was a rumor too recently about August 6th or something like that, or you know August 7th or something that there was going to be a special keynote, uh, and I called total BS on that one. There's no way that's happening in August. Um, it'll be, it'll probably be October 1st plus or minus 10 days, and so that, it'll be right around the beginning of October. Uh, best thing to do is if you want to figure out the exact date of when they're going to make the announcement, we kind of need to look at the schedule for Google and Microsoft. And see if they have anything scheduled in and figure out when Apple would schedule to trump them. So that's what they've done in the past. <laughs> so I've heard uh, some speculation that was tied to when the earnings are earnings month. No, they happen. always kept this, they always try to keep them uh, a little bit separate. Okay. Yeah, because the earnings calls are going to come out, the uh, earnings call for that quarter will come out around October 20th, so plus or minus a couple of, actually, October 20th to 25th, somewhere around that day, usually. Just like this month. Um, it, the earnings call next Tuesday. It'll be Tuesday for this uh, for last quarter. So it's always somewhere around the, in the 20s. 
April 19th is actually at the earliest. Unfortunately, this year it wasn't yesterday, so I haven't been able to give you some updated numbers. But it gives me a chance now at least to have some video that I can come back and go. I totally blew that when I said 35 million and they were only at 30 million. Um, but the thing is, if there's anything above 30 million with iPhone sales, the Apple stock's going to jump. Would be my guess. Because right now, all the analysts are figuring it for in the 26 to 28 range for iPhone sales. And I just I just don't see that. If you look at past trends, the fact that there's more countries, I just don't see why the iPhone, it's not a quarter before the launch. This is the quarter that will drop. This is the quarter that will be sub 30. But last quarter should still be in the well above 30. So do you think we're approaching saturation? Everybody that wants an iPhone has got it? No, I mean, you're only in the US, just in the US, you're only above like 55, 56% smartphone penetration. So there's still a lot of people, and that, again, I do go back to, if you just want a phone, you get an Android. If you want more than a phone, you get an iPhone. But I still think there's a lot of people out there that want, want more than a phone. Um, and definitely outside the world, and, and the biggest carrier in the world, in China, still doesn't have the iPhone. So Apple still has a big, I mean, there's a uh, China, uh, China Mobile, I guess it is, the big one. Um, they've got like six, uh, 400, 500 million users. Um, so there's some big uptick. Are there any issues with Chinese government migrating that might stop Apple from uh, selling that market? Uh, you know, China's government is you know fueled by the U.S. manufacturers and other manufacturers in China building. Uh, they might call themselves a communist, but there are some ways. I, I've gone to China and done business in China. In some ways, China is more capitalist than the yeah. U.S. Um, yeah, I mean, so they're more capitalist, like 1970s capitalism. Capitalism under the table. Yeah. Well, but my point is, uh, there, there was, you know, they are their money in capitalism business that drives the Chinese economy, and I don't see China. But they have all other like they had disagreements with Google about this. That's a different thing. That was because they want information. Yeah. yeah. This is. I mean. You're looking at apples and oranges here. You're talking about information in the cloud, whereas Apple just having stuff built in China and having devices built and sold, that's completely there. I mean, there's privacy features of the, uh, of the uh, iPhone. Yeah, so the as, as I look at this, anytime you connect a device to the internet, there's privacy issues. You, you, yeah. you can't go out and be totally secure. I think that's a misnomer. Um, yeah. Anytime you surf the web, someone knows what you're doing, whether it's the ISP, where it is, somebody knows what you're going and where you're yeah. seeing. People are thinking this is only privacy or security issues with Those might be things the Chinese government might object to. Yeah. Well, they have to protect the Chinese government. Yeah, I mean, most of Apple stuff is, is about protecting your personal information and your kids from porn. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, Apple does a really good job with that and makes it a really good user experience. I, you know, I, I just don't see it. I don't think they're going to do a backdoor for China to get into. Um, I mean, you know, Google, can, again, comparing it to Google is a different thing. Google very well funded in the NSA, and China and the NSA kind of are at two different sides of things. China's going to pick all that off the ISP level anyway if they want to. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, you know, Apple is very, very committed to China on the iTunes side. So, yeah, so I mean, might be willing to give them some demand if they face that the Chinese government was to trade. Yeah, if I, there were any. Yeah, again, I, I don't think that's an issue. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Oh, okay. I, I'd be very surprised if we come back next year and say, oh, I was wrong on that one. But we'll, we'll see. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.